السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين My dear viewers everywhere welcome to a new live edition of your program Ask Wada A quick reminder with our phone numbers and contact informations uh, beginning with the area code 0020238551 or 132 and the Facebook page is the R Muhammad Salah uh, official um, Alhamdulillah uh, in the last episode we only had a couple questions pending from the previous episode from uh, one sister Umm Abdul Rahman from the United States and her uh, first question was that she's having a jury duty very soon is it permissible to attend? Um, to begin answering this question, I recall a hadith which is collected by Abu Dawood, Al Hakim, Al Nasa'i, and others, in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al Qudatu Thalatha. Judges are three types. Two are in hell, and one is in heaven concerning what will happen in the future based on how do they judge as far as the two judges who will end up in hellfire may Allah protect us again is that uh, the first is a judge who rules and judges between people wrongfully without knowledge so he doesn't have the knowledge of the deen and accordingly he judges according to his hawa his whim his desire what he thinks. So when he misses, he will be punished by Allah, as the Prophet said that he will be in hellfire. What Thani, and the second type of judges, is somebody who judges wrongfully, knowingly. So he knows the verdict of what Allah has revealed unto his messenger in this regard, whether concerning um, murder, whether concerning uh, falsely accusing chaste men and women, whether concerning stealing, so there is a set punishment and a divine law in this regard. So he dismisses all of that and he judges according to his hawa. Or he favors one person who is invited because of a reason or another. The Prophet also said that he will be in hell. And the third type, the only type of judges who will be saved is the judge who would judge and rule between people rightfully according to what Allah has revealed to his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam yani knowingly so he knew the truth and he judged according to the truth that he knew so one have to understand that I do not volunteer to judge between people even if I'm asked to judge between people or judge a particular person concerning a case unless if I have knowledge. But this case is different that the sister doesn't have a choice. We'll talk about it after this call inshallah. Brother Abdul Raouf from the case says, Alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In fact, I was uh, planning to ask a question yesterday, but when I was enjoying your program, Gardens of Voice, and I postponed it for today. Thank you, brother. Jazakallahu oh. khairan. And you were, in fact, running short of time yesterday itself to complete the topic, and it was so interesting for all of us. So I had no choice to postpone the question. My question, Sheikh, is my sister passed away a month ago, and my nephew, uh, he's studying outside his hometown now this time, and he's every day getting frightened in his dreams and he's seeing his mother regularly and he was kind of, I said, let me ask Sheikh and inshallah. He's, he's doing his morning and evening azkar regularly but he's still in a kind of situation where he's frightened every day. Mm. Okay. 
So any supplication should be uh, read or any dua which you can do on to just. Jazakallah uh, khairan, Abdurrahman. Sure, inshallah, uh, I will be happy to answer your question and guide you to uh, uh, what I think would be very helpful for him, inshallah. Uh, Sister Aisha from Nigeria, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking, Sister Aisha. I have a question. Uh, I want to know uh, what can I do if I am supposed to do qabli uh, or ba'di in a prayer, but I forgot not until like the next day. So what do I do? You said you do qabli or ba'di, yani before or after taslim you mean? Yes, yes. So but I forgot. So but I forgot I didn't do it not until the next day I remembered. So what do I do? You mean you did not remember the prostrations of forgetfulness until the next day, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Really what did you actually forget in the prayer which required you to pray sujood as uh, I'm sorry, I did not get the question. Okay, you said that you owed the two prostrations for forgetfulness. Why? What yes. did you forget in the prayer? I forgot. I forgot to do uh, the sujood. I for I did only one sujood before doing. Uh, ah, I see. So you only did one sajda. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Sister Aisha. Okay, brothers and sisters, let me answer this question immediately because it is very urgent. She said that she forgot to pray the two prostrations for forgetfulness. And obviously these two prostrations is to make up in inisyan or sah forgetfulness in the prayer, provided if what you forgot is something mandatory or if it is something, uh, a pillar for innocence, then you're required to make up the pillar which you missed. Somebody, instead of making two prostrations in any unit, in any rak'ah of the prayer, only prayed once, made one sajda. Then in this case, you must make the second sajda. You make it up if it was in this rak'ah, or if it was in the last rak'ah and you remembered. So you make, you make it up, then you pray the two prostrations for forgetfulness, and you make the sleep. But after you finish the prayer, you remember that, you may have prayed only one sajda in any of the rakahs which passed. In this case, you need to stand up and pray a whole rakah. Because missing a single segment, which is a pillar of any of the units of the prayer, will void the entire rakah, the entire unit. If forgetting the two prostrations for forgetfulness was simply because you missed the middle tashahud, and you knew that you missed it and you're supposed to pray sujood as sah but you forgot that too, there is no problem, your prayer is valid. And you don't have to make it up a day or two later because there is something called a long span between the prayer and remembering, so you don't owe anything. But in this case, you actually prayed your prayer missing one rak'ah, so this prayer doesn't count, you have to make it up entirely. And there is no need to pray sujood as sah because in this case you will make up the entire prayer. Barakallah fikum. It is similar to a person who prayed without wudu and after the prayer he remembered, well, I didn't have wudu. Okay, this prayer doesn't count. You have to make it up. You have to pray again after performing wudu or tahara. Um, um, Umar Abdul Rahman from the United States and the jury duty. I was saying that, subhanAllah, um, Allah the Almighty says in Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter number 5, uh, verse number 48, and the following verse, verse number 49. He has commanded his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam as follows. He said that we have given you the book very fine and confirming the previous revelations and as a guardian over the previous revelations. So that when you judge between whether Muslims or non-Muslims, people of the book, Ahlul Kitab, you judge them according to the revelation that has come to you. We have sent the book unto you with the truth. 
مصدقا لما بين يديه verify the authenticity of the books which have been revealed before it the Torah, the Gospel, the Zabur من الكتاب ومهيمنا عليه and as a guardian over it and abrogating anything which contradicts what is mentioned in the last revelation which is the Quran so accordingly O Muhammad peace be upon him فاحكم بينهم بما أنزل الله judge between them according to what Allah has revealed unto you ولا تتبع أهواءهم عما جاءك من الحق don't you follow the low desire which is to turn you away from the truth which has been revealed unto you لكل جعلنا منكم شرعة ومنهاجة for every nation we have appointed a sharia a bylaw a constitution and a law and order so if you're asked O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam to judge between any of the people of the book or anyone who is not Muslim they ask you to judge between them they resort to you فَحْكُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ عَمَّا جَأَكَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ so in this case a dispute between a husband and wife a dispute between uh, a worker and his employer a dispute which have a reference in the revelation of Allah in the book of Allah, the Quran, or in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, I must judge according to that. I don't know, then I would say, I don't know, I'm not sure. I'm undecided. Because if I don't have an excuse not to attend, then I would attend and I say, I'm ignorant, I have no knowledge, I cannot say a word. I'm, you know, undecided. Or if I know, if I have a chance to study and I consult the scholars and what does Allah say in this regard? I would say it. Then in 49, which is the following verse, again, وَأَنِحْكُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَهْوَأَهُمْ Another confirmation, Ya Muhammad, peace be upon him, you should judge between them according to what Allah has revealed unto you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Abdul Rahim from the case A. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, how are you, Sheikh? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Alhamdulillah. I, alhamdulillah. I have a question. Uh, actually, uh, I would like to start. Actually, me, uh, I'm a revert who is uh, working in KSA from the past three years. And uh, I'm basically from India. So my question is like uh, <clears throat> when I... Uh, every year there is an vacation, annual vacation, when uh, I go to India to spend time with my family. My family knows that I have accepted Islam, but they are a little uh, resistant. They don't, they don't, they don't, uh, they, they kind of not are uh, completely accepting it. Mm. My question is that uh, uh, it's like I want to practice uh, Islam to the best of my abilities. I want to follow the way of my Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the best of my abilities. So I am sporting a beard. My beard is almost like a fistful, almost like a U-shake. So I, uh, last year when I wanted to go to a vac- uh, vacation, uh, my mom said that I have to shave and come. And my dad is angry because of my beard. He doesn't, he, he stopped talking to me. Like from past almost two years, he is not talking to me because of me sporting a beard, actually. That is what my mom says. So this year, uh, I kind of am missing my family. I want to go to India for vacation to spend time with my family, to talk to them, to talk to my father, to uh, uh, somewhere uh, like I keep on hearing not to break ties. So, and I want to follow the son of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also. I don't want to shave. I came to a condition where I convinced my mom that I will not shave, but I will trim a little bit and come. But I, my wife, say, my wife, she, Alhamdulillah, she is also a and she encourages me in most of the things to follow in Islam. So she is ha- having an opinion that I shouldn't do, so I'm a little confused. I, 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 I need your opinion on this, Sheikh, because uh, my father isn't talking to me. My mom says that if you at least three men come, come then only to India, and uh, uh, otherwise don't come. And even I want to ask you is regarding my wife. Uh, my wife, Alhamdulillah, since we are here in Saudi Arabia, we can follow Islam to the best of our abilities. My wife is in complete niqab and all. But uh, what shall I do when uh, her uh, hijab, 
I want even uh, to take care of her hijab and her, uh, 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 what do we say, haya, uh, uh, when I go to my family's house. So I need your opinion on that, Sheikh. Any advice you can give on that? Okay. Jazakallahu khayran. Uh, my dear brother Abdul Rahim uh, from the KSA, originally from India. Uh, first of all, may Allah keep you steadfast on his straight path and increase the level of your Iman. May Allah guide you and your family. And may Allah guide your parents. But for now, uh, let me answer Um Abdul Rahman's second question. Is it permissible to put a cat to sleep or the merciful killing uh, because of uh, sickness? Yes, it is permissible because uh, there is no point of wasting money and effort on an animal which is suffering he cannot communicate with it and by the end it is gonna die and uh, it will be better for uh, such animal so no problem if your uh, veterinarian advise you to do so uh, what do we have here brother Abdul Rauf first from the case A his nephew after his mother's death has been having uh, bad dreams and so on. <clears throat> he said that he recites the Adhkar. Tell you the truth. I do not believe that any person would recite the last couple ayahs of Surah Al-Baqarah and would still have any bad dream. If any person were to make wudu before going to bed, then with a towel or something cleans up his bed as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prescribed. Then you lie down on your right side and you recite آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون to the end of Surah Al-Baqarah, the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said whoever recites them in a night kafatah they will suffice him. They are sufficient for him as means of protection. That's possible. Ayatul Kursi, the bad dreams, the Prophet ﷺ said that they come from Satan. The Prophet ﷺ also stated in the hadith, in the long hadith of Abu Huraira, when Satan advised him, when he was stealing from the charity, that if you recite Ayat al Kursi at a night, during the night, and before going to sleep, no Satan will come close to you until the morning. If you recite the last three chapters of the Quran, Al Ikhlas and Al Mu'awwidatayn, three times, each set after you recite it, you blow in your palm, thrice in your palms, and then you wipe over your face, your head, your body. If you do that, there is no way that Satan will come to you. It is not possible. So again, let's do this and please I hope you will come back to me and you say that he's been doing this and it is helping because this is what the messenger of Allah peace be upon him said again make wudu before going to sleep lie down on your right side first obviously if you flip over afterward no problem but what is restricted is lying down on your stomach it is not permissible uh, reciting the last two ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah, Aman al rasulu to the end. Reciting Ayat Al-Kursi, reciting Al-Mu'awwidat. Then there is a beautiful supplication when you lie down and you place your right palm beneath your right cheek. And you say, Bismika Allahumma amutu wa ahya. In, you, in your name, O oh Allah, I die, then I get up, I come back to life. بسمك اللهم ضعت جنبي وبك أرفعه اللهم إن أمسكت نفسي فارحمها وإن أرسلتها فاحفظها بما تحفظ به عبادك الصالحين اللهم إني أسلمت نفسي إليك ووجهت وجهي إليك وفوضت أمري إليك وألجأت ظهري إليك These supplications of course uh, we discussed repeatedly uh, before and that's why I would just uh, uh, you know it's sufficient to refer to them and they're all compiled in the little booklet of the fortress of the Muslim or the believer Keep it next to your bed. Recite this adhkar before you go to sleep. It will be five minutes. But insha'Allah you will sleep like a baby. If you can recite the entire surah of Surah Al-Mulk, Tabarak Al-Mulk, before you uh, fall asleep as well, that is great. One more thing now. For anyone who lost a beloved one, a parent, a child, uh, uh, a lover, 
a loving person, a husband and wife, a spouse, whatever. Just remember one thing. This is a reality of this life. أَحْبِبْ مَنْ شِئْتَ فَإِنَّكَ مُفَارِقُ Angel Gabriel, peace be upon him, came to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and said, O oh Muhammad, love whomever you will, love whomever you like, but sooner or later you are going to part from each other. Either you're going to depart him, or he or she is going to depart you. The Prophet ﷺ said, In my death is the greatest condolence and means of patience for anyone who's afflicted with any calamity. If you lose a beloved person, remember that you lost before him our most beloved, the Prophet ﷺ. Allah said to him, إِنَّكَ مَيِّتٌ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتٌ This is the reality. And instead of falling into depression and feeling stuck and paralyzed, rather think positively, be proactive. How can I benefit my beloved mother? Today I recited one para of the Qur'an and by the end I made dua for my mother. That will benefit her. Allah will deliver your salam and your dua to her. But to feel like you're stuck in your skin and you're in depression because you lost your mother, life will move on even if you're stuck. And tomorrow you're going to lose some more people or some more people are going to lose you. This is the reality of life. We're anxiously waiting to meet our beloved ones and on top of them, our most beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hopefully in Al-Firdaus Al-A'la in Paradise. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Medina from Ethiopia. Wa alaikum shaykh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum shaykh. Ya Medina, assalamu alaikum, I hear you. How are you shaykh? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Uh, I want to ask two questions. Yeah, go ahead. Hello? Okay. My first question is, uh, when you leave your country and go to other country, for a specific time, for one month or two months, uh, can you play the Salat al for how many times? Minutes? Does it have a time limit or you can play for the specific time you are staying there? Okay, thank Is you. Is that my question, sir? Yeah, I did. Your second question, please, Medina. Okay, my second question is, uh, uh, can we make, can, can we make the, uh, in a while in a sujood, in our language, other than Arabic language? Okay, uh, I got your second question as well. All right, thank um, you. My second question is, can we make dua? I yeah. got it. I got your question. Thank you, Sister Medina. Barakallahu feeki. Um, Brother Abdul Rahim, who's a revert, originally from India, so basically he was Hindu. Alhamdulillah, Allah has guided him to believe in the oneness of the only Lord who created everything that exists and who is the only sustainer and unto him we shall return. He believed in the oneness of Allah. He believed in the message of all the messengers, including Muhammad, peace be upon him. And when he takes his annual vacation and he goes home, he's having some hard time with his parents. Does the Quran deal with this issue or did the Quran tackle this matter? Yes, of course. In Surah Al-Isra, in Surah An-Nisa, and in Surah Luqman, Allah the Almighty repeatedly emphasized the importance of being beautiful to one's parents. And we find in Surah um, uh, uh, Luqman, verse number 15, Allah the Almighty emphasizes the fact that even if they were non-believers, even if they were non-believers, they have rights upon you. But those rights have a limit when it comes to contradicting the concept of your belief. Because you love to your Creator, you love to your Sustainer, you love to your Lord, should take precedence over the love to anyone else, including your own self. And this is the entire story in brief of Islam. So we find in Surah Luqman, for instance, Allah the Almighty says in verse number 14, 
ووصينا الإنسان بوالديه حملته أمه وهنا على وهن وفصاله في عامين أنشكر لي ولوالديك إلي المصير وستادد ده بيفور so Allah ordered when you have to be dutiful to your parents particularly your mother because of you know bearing you for nine months breastfeeding you and all of that being grateful to your parents means being grateful to Allah being a devout worshiper of Allah the Almighty. Then he said, وَإِنْ جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَنْ تُشْرِكَ بِمَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٌ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا وَاتَّبِعْ سَبِيلَ مَنْ أَنَابَ إِلَيِّ ثُمَّ إِلَيَّ مَرْجِعُكُمْ فَأُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ Akhi Abd al-Rahim, this particular ayah was revealed because of an incident identical to your case. What does it mean? I guess we have some callers. Let me take some calls and inshallah I'll get back to ayah number 15 of Surah Luqman. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Zaina from Nigeria. Okay, we lost that call. Please try again. Allah the Almighty says, وَإِنْ جَاهَدَاكَ The word jihad, which frightens, you know, a lot of people. And if they none, if the if your non-believing parents, both jahadaka, if they make jihad, yani if they struggle with you, in order to persuade you to make you associate partners to Allah in worship, فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا Obey them not. So you see the previous ayah, whole ayah, and it is mentioned in the Quran repeatedly. You gotta be nice, you gotta be, you gotta be kind, you gotta be gentle to your parents, you gotta be dutiful to your parents, you have to serve them to the best of your ability. But if they struggle with you to make you associate partners to Allah in worship, then obey them not. Does it mean that to boycott them, not to listen to them and say, Lucky me, finally I got rid of him? No. But still give them a good company in this dunya. What does it mean? It means obey them in any other matter. Support them from your own wealth. Treat them if they need a medication. Feed them if they need food, housing. Serve them in the best possible way. But in the matter of associating partners to Allah in worship, or disobeying Allah the Almighty, of abandoning your deen, nope, not a chance. وَاتَّبِعْ سَبِيلَ مَنْ أَنَابَ إِلَيْهِ And only follow the path and the way of the person who turned unto me, that is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Follow the way of Prophet Muhammad, not the way of your parents. When Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, may Allah be pleased with him, accepted Islam, his mother vowed not to drink, not to eat, not to take a shower, not to sit in the shade until her son will come back to his senses. This is what she was thinking, that he lost his mind or he's under magical spell. Until his son, her son would come back to his faith, which was no faith, basically worshiping idols. Or she would die in this condition so that he will be blamed for her death. She thought by doing so, Sa'ad will come back on his knees and say, okay, okay, okay. Now, I don't believe in Allah anymore. Rather, he turned to his mother and said, Ya Ummah, my beloved mother, by Allah, if you have a hundred souls and they come out of your body one after another in order for me to give up on this faith after Allah has guided me to his deen, I would never do it. Whether you eat or you don't, it's for your own self. I love you, my mother. I'm not going to convert. I'm not going to give up on my faith for the sake of no one. And yesterday we were talking about Mus'ab ibn Umayr and his sacrifice in this God and many cases like that. So still visit your parents, take care of your parents, send them financial support, uphold their ties and your brothers and your sisters and your relatives but when they speak to you about your deen, uh, shave your beard, stop praying, do this, do that, act as if you're deaf. But still be dutiful to your parents. May Allah guide them and may Allah soften their hearts to treat you 
kindly as you treat them kindly. Brothers and sisters, let's take a short break and we'll be back insha'Allah in a few minutes for some more. Please stay tuned. Commercials motivate viewers into immediate action and to sway consumer loyalty from one brand or service to the other. That's why we're here for you to help you sell your products and services by using creative ideas that bring life into your own TV commercial. Advertise your business and branded products and services on Huda TV. We will offer you fast paced and energetic 30 second affordable TV spots. Advertise on Huda TV, acquire fresh customers, and stay within your budget. For more info or to receive a quote, please send your inquiries to Advertise. Advert at Huda TV. Huda TV. This is the Dean's the Show. This is the Dean's 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 the Dean's Show. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Dean Show. From time to time, we sometimes, we answer some of your questions. We have so many important issues that we're dealing with here on The Dean Show, and we encourage you to come back here every week. And if you don't catch us on the TV station, you can go to thedeanshow.com, where all of our shows are there. Uh, it is important for us, when we look at the issue of holiday myths, uh, that we look at the whole picture. And from the beginning of time, people worshipped the Creator in different ways. The Quran tells us in the chapter of the Bee, Surah An-Nahl, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا عَنِ عَبُدُ اللَّهَ وَجْتَنِبَ الْتَوْمُ Maryam, how are you? Good, alhamdulillah. Thank you for being with us on the Dean Show. You're welcome. So how old are you again? I'm eight years old. I didn't want to get that wrong. Eight years old. And you've memorized how many juz of the Quran? I memorized 21 juz from the Quran. 21 juz, mashallah. Uh, as you know that there is no concept of clergyman in Islam. There isn't? There is not. Okay. It, and this idea is supposed to be very liberating. Nobody comes between you and your creator. Okay. You do not need an operator. Mm -hmm. It's a direct call. So Islam rejects the whole notion of clergyman. So a sheikh, imam is a title that is given to a person like myself. Um, when the community feels that you're worthy of it. And it's just a title out of respect. This is the Whoever believes in Allah and the last day, let him maintain strong family ties. A hadith that I came across, which made me decide to make a surprise visit to my sister in Pennsylvania. When I read it, I was overcome by shame, since the last time I actually saw my sister was last year, when she asked me to babysit her daughter Fatima. My sister asked me to take care of Fatima for a few days as she was about to give birth to a second daughter. To be completely honest, I had no clue how to take care of a baby girl. I could hardly take care of myself, but I couldn't say no to my sister. When my brother-in-law dropped her off, she didn't even know how to say my name. 
I had no idea how I was supposed to entertain her. I didn't even know how to break the ice. So I started reflecting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back our phone numbers are a code zero zero two zero two three eight triple five one three one or one three two um sister tida jayita says is it acceptable to send a photo of oneself without hijab for a man that want to marry you if he requests that in the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said to one of the companions who were about to get married, he said, have you seen her? Have you seen the proposed bride? He said, no. He said, انظر إليها فإنه أحرى أن يؤدم بينكما. You better see her. You better look at her. Not any look. A look of investigation. To investigate. Because looking at her face will tell you all, whether you like her or not. And she have the right to see the man who's proposing to her as well. But you send in a photo without wearing hijab, I wouldn't advise that at all. Because you never know who is this person and what if he is not interested, whether he's going to keep this photo or it would fall in whose hand. So rather, if somebody whom you trust, a sister, an aunt, a mom, would show him, fine, but to keep a picture with him and to show it to his friends, no, I wouldn't do that. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Ashfaq from United Arab Emirates, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Sheikh? Fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking, my dear brother. I love you for the sake of Allah, Sheikh. Ahabak alladhi ahbabtani feel. May Allah, the one whom you love me for sake, love you as well. Thank you so no, much. No, Appreciate yes. it. I have two questions, Sheikh. My first question is, suppose if I miss my two rakat sunnah after Maghrib prayer, and if I don't get any chance praying before Isha Salah, can I pray this after Isha Salah? Okay. This is my first question. My second question is, when the Imam is leading the prayer in Fajr, Maghrib, and Isha, when he's reciting Surah Fatiha before that, uh, Bismillah Rahman, when he's reciting loudly, is this, is this is from a Sunnah or is it a Bidah? He's, recite, he's reciting loudly in Dhuhr and Asr? Yes. No, no. Uh, while reciting in Fajr and Maghrib and Isha, before starting Alham, Surah Fatiha, Bismillah Rahman, Rahim. Because I see he has... Ah, you mean he's this. reciting Al Basmala, Bismillah, out there? Yeah, Al Basmillah, yes, I recite. Okay, okay. Yes. Barakallah. Barakallah. Wa jazakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Aisha from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Ali. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm just fine, thank you for asking. My dear sister, go ahead. Okay, I have three questions, Sheikh. MashaAllah, bring them on. Um, my first question um, about uh, music and prayer. Um, if you are supposed to say for a class, if um, like Sister Aisha, I'm sorry, to, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but your voice is breaking off. I cannot uh, grasp on your question. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, I do, but sometimes your voice breaks off. I cannot hear fully the question. Okay, can I go on? Please try. My first question is about um, Salah, prayer. Mm-hmm. If you are making the four rakats of Zuhur and you forget to sit for the middle of Sahiya, mm -hmm. and immediately you stand up, you remember, do you get to go and sit for the Sahiya or you pray the rest of the rakat and make the Sujur of Sahiya? Okay, okay. Your second question, please. My second question is if Salah for saying out loud, um, for example, if it's Maghrib and you forget to recite uh, in your heart, how do you call, how do you make up for that? Okay. Or is it when it's supposed to be silent and you recite it and how do you make up for that? Okay. And my last question I asked last week and I couldn't um, I didn't understand the answer I was given about um, about um, 
Okay, I'll call back inshallah if okay. I remember and he just forgot. Okay, thank you, Sister Aisha. Okay, Barakallahu Fiki. Uh, Sister Medina from Ethiopia had two questions before the break in the first segment. The time frame, the period during which she's allowed to shorten the prayer for how long? If you're traveling a travel distance, if you're traveling to another city, which covers 83 kilometers or more, and you're staying in this place four days or less, you're allowed to shorten your prayer. If you arrive to another city or another country, and from day one you realize that you're going to be staying there for a month or so, more than four days, then you pray regular. You pray each prayer as regular. The four rak'ahs will be four rak'ahs. The four units will be offered four units. Dhuhr, Asr and Isha the same. So only if you're staying four days or less, then in this case you're allowed to shorten the prayer. Making prayer in your prostration, in your mother tongue, in your own language, is it permissible? If you do not know how to phrase your dua in Arabic, then it is permissible to make your supplication in your sujood, in your mother tongue. May Allah accept. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Alameen from Nigeria. Good evening, Doctor. Good evening, Brother Amin. Um, uh, I want to ask uh, about uh, this uh, issue. Hmm? I have sworn on different occasions that I won't, uh, I won't do some things, but later on I realize doing, doing them is more important than not doing. Mm. So, um, like, uh, I have sworn uh, different uh, occasions, like three times. So, am I going to pass uh, nine, nine days or I can amalgamate uh, them and uh, pass three, three, three days? Okay, give me I an example. Really... Give me an example. And was it that you violated your oath once? Then another oath you made concerning the same matter and you violated it again. Then the third time likewise? Or the oath that you sworn was simply a confirmation of the same thing? Do you follow no, it's me? not. It's not the same thing. It's different. Uh, different things. Like um, uh, I, I saw that I won't. I want to. Sp- uh, I won't speak to this guy. Then later on, I realized my mistakes. That I have to like uh, um, uh, speak to him. Mm. Then. And uh, another issue is that uh, I have uh, I have the woman that I want to marry, and uh, we got some issues. And I said to Allah, I will not talk to her again. And uh, and he got weak. Yeah, and later and later, and uh, I was very weak that I need to uh, get in touch with her. Yeah, that happens all the time. Yeah, so things like that. Okay, if, okay. Then, then, Akhi, I mean, these are Different. not the same cases. These are separate cases, and each case has its own ransom for violating an oath that you fail to fulfill. And please, in the future, there is no need to swear unless if it is something that you require. Like, for instance, um, if you're a witness, if you are in a court, Allah the Almighty says, ولا تجعلوا الله عرضة لأيمانكم أن تبروا وتتقوا وتصلحوا بين الناس These are the only cases which is you know, okay to swear to Allah But some people do have the habit of Wallahi, Wallahi, Wallahi My son is like that Just um, uh, uh, today um, We heard that um, uh, Sheikh Dr. Aid Al-Qarani May Allah have the mercy on him And may Allah uh, safeguard him and protect him uh, he was shot but alhamdulillah he's safe in the Philippines and in the same city that I'm about to visit so my son is 7 years old and he said wallahi he's not going to the city and he kept saying it like he's a, a grown up man I was just focused and paying attention to one thing why do you keep swearing do not say wallahi 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 unless if you're asked to say 
Wallahi. Uh, by the way, I see this opportunity to make dua for uh, our great Shaykh and colleague, Dr. Ra'id al Qurani. May Allah have mercy on him and may Allah protect him and all his brothers who are accompanying him in this journey. Uh, may Allah safeguard them and bring them home safely. Allahumma ameen. Uh, so, if you said, Wallahi, I'm not talking to this guy, and you realize that it is better to speak to him, this is exactly what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, مَنْ حَلَفَ عَلَى يَمِينٍ فَرَأَ الَّتِي غَيْرَهَا خَيْرًا مِنْهَا فَلْيَأْتِ الَّتِي هِيَ خَيْرٍ ثُمَّ لِيُكَفِّرْ عَنْ يَمِينٍ This is exactly the answer to your question. If somebody swears to do anything or not to do anything, then he realizes that it is better to revoke his statement and his oath. Let him do what is better and pay the ransom for his oath. And the ransom, when you say that fasting for three days, that's not necessarily true. Because the order is not like that. In Surah Al-Ma'idah, Allah Almighty says, وَلَكِ يُؤَخِذُكُمْ بِمَا عَقَّدْتُمُ الْأَيْمَانِ فَكَفَّارَتُهُ إِطْعَامُ عَشَرَةِ مَسَاكِينَ مِنْ أَوْسَطِ مَا تُطْعِمُونَ أَهْلِيكُمْ أَوْ كِسْوَتُهُمْ أَوْ تَحْرِيرُ رَقَبًا فَمَنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ فَصِيَمُ ثَلَثَةِ أَيَّامِ So the first in order, feeding ten poor people, أَوْ كِسْوَتُهُمْ or buying them clothes, outfit, a shirt and pair of pants, is that or is that for ten poor people. أو تحرير رقبة فرين سليب. If you do not have the means of feeding ten poor people or buying clothes for them, then and only then. فما لم يجد. If you cannot afford it, فصيام ثلاثة أيام. Some people take it lightly and they just fast three days. In this case, this ransom isn't sufficient as long as the person have the means to feed ten masakin. In this case, for each oath that you violated, you need to give a kafara. So feed in 30 people, because each oath has a different entity and a different subject. Brother Ashfaq, I need to answer your questions before we wrap it up, because we ran out of time. Oh, mashallah, we have Aisha too. Ashfaq, making up the sunnah of Maghrib, you didn't have a chance to pray it. Can you pray it after Aisha? Yes, you can, inshallah. Uh, as the Prophet ﷺ made up the two sunnah of Dhuhr after Asr, even though the time was disliked to pray in a wafil. Sometimes the Imam recites Al-Basmala, which means Bismillah rahman rahim in the beginning of the prayer, uh, before reciting Surah Al-Fatiha out loud. Is the prayer valid? The prayer is valid. But the sunnah is to recite it uh, to yourself, not to recite it out loud. But according to the school of Imam al-Shafi'i, al-Jahru bil-Basmala, to recite it out loud. So if he is following this school, and if he is the Imam, do not object to him, and follow him in the prayer, and the prayer is valid, if everything is done or right. But that practice would not invalidate the prayer. It's an opinion. Aisha from Nigeria, if she forgets the middle tashahud, and she's about to get up, what does she have to do? The middle tashahud is sunnah. And if you got up and you're almost close to standing, do not return back to the sitting position because now you are already involved in what is known as rukn, a pillar, which is a standing position. So resume your prayer. And by the end, pray the two prostrations of forgetfulness before making taslim. But you forgot to recite the middle tashahud at tahiyyat. And you're going up, you remembered. Or if you're an imam and somebody says, Subhanallah, so you're closer to sitting down, sit down. Recite your tashahud and again pray the two prostrations. By the end of the prayer, after reciting, at tahiyyatu lillah, and before making taslim. Um, if she forgets in the Maghrib prayer and she doesn't recite out loud, uh, how would she rectify that? You don't need to rectify that because reciting out loud in Maghrib, Isha, and Fajr is Sunnah. Brothers and sisters, by that we come to the end of this episode. We ask Allah the Almighty to pardon us and forgive us for our shortcomings. And if we have erred, this is from our own selves. This is from myself. And if I have answered rightly, this is from Allah the Almighty. May Allah accept from all of us 
أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Allah is my heart's speech Your mercy is what I beseech